this is the perspective of most Predator Engine videos on YouTube. But we're going to change that for this video. For this video, you will probably be at this perspective. Now we've been working on this engine and we have covered a ton of mods in order to be able to hit about 6,000 RPMs on the bench and be happy. There'll be a link for that down below, along with what's going on with this horizontal shaft to vertical shaft conversion that we're doing. Now in this video, the only modifications that we will have on it are a custom intake, which after I threw a picture of this up on the Facebook page and on the community tab of YouTube, you guys got a hold of me, and I ended up in a full redesign down the rabbit hole. A bunch of you sent me pictures, how you would do it, a whole bunch of redesign ideas. So we ended up down the rabbit hole and did what you guys suggested. We've got our clear valve cover. So we should be able to see oil when it's splashing around up in here. We're not going to convert the valve cover yet to being up because we want to see how this ends up playing out. The other side note I'll give here is that the Chinesium side cover conversion that we did, this started off as a generator engine, so we had to convert the side over to a regular side cover. The Chinesium one that we bought, the gasket is leaking, and we need to replace it. I've already ordered one, but it hasn't come in time for making this video. Up here, we templated where the holes should be, just like if you were bolting a tor uh, torque converter plate up. And that would line up like... So, which, even with a perfect template, I still managed to screw that up. So we grab the plasma cutter and we cut those out. This is the top engine mount plate out of a Craftsman, which is bolted down to my engine testing stand. Now, a lawn tractor engine usually comes this way with the cylinder on this side if it's a single, and the exhaust usually exits right about in here. If it's a twin, it'll have an exhaust that exits on both sides. But the key basic idea is that we're going to set it with the cylinder going this way. And we're going to hope that the exhaust port lines up somewhere right about in here. That's the hope anyway. Oh, other side note about the Chinesium side cover that we chose to use. Apparently, all of the holes in it are metric. So we had to hunt down these M8 bolts in order to put in. Just a warning in case you decide to buy that side cover from my video. I checked the surface here as much as I could. For the life of me, I can't find anything wrong with it. I even sanded it at one point. So we have filled it full of an amount of RTV sealant that nobody should ever own up to. We're going to put the choke on, and we're going to see what happens. We've definitely got air getting in the system somewhere because it's running happier when the choke is on. Did the plastic intake fail? Yes, I'll show you what happened there in a sec, but it wasn't the plastic's fault. It was mine and not having a good enough printer. We're going to move on to making a metal intake at this point. I picked up a couple of really large washers in order to make some flanges, except for what I noticed is that... An exhaust flange is exactly the same as the intake flange. Same exact bolt pattern and everything. So, I just sliced off an old piece of exhaust off of another project. Here's our flange. 
We've got a piece of conduit that we've cut that angle on the end of about 20 dozen times so that we can right angle right off into here and then we're going to mount the carburetor right about here. On this plastic intake, for those that care to learn, right there you can see line separation that happened in the intake. And that goes all the way through. My camera does not like the white. That goes all the way through to there. There's another line separation failure right in here you might be able to see. And that is not the plastic's fault. That is, I exceeded my printer's capability. This plastic in a perfect world takes an enclosed printer and it takes a heated hot end that is more capable than what my machine can do. Learning to print ABS has been an interesting learning curve. But, after stealing some foam from the packaging from John's new electric bike, making an enclosure, making a couple of draft ducts down each side because this thing takes air in through there, I think we are hopefully on our last version of this stupid thing. Now granted, I am only doing this so that I can be able to make one out of steel later, or maybe eventually do a lost sand casting in aluminum later. This is not going to be a permanent thing. We had a learning experience. ABS is a little outside of the capability of the Sidewinder X2 that I have. But we learned. The other note that we learned is that right there got clogged with RTV sealant. And I believe that might have ended up causing part of the lean out problem that we had because that corresponds to this and that right there is the vent for the bowl down here in order to help it with filling up fuel and everything. Now it shouldn't have messed it up but it definitely did not help the scenario. All right. Once we get everything welded up and we got the throttle return put back on, we'll bring you back. All right, here we go. Fresh gas, one very ugly steel intake. Our idle should be way too high. We're going to put the choke to the on position to try it. We cleaned up our spark plug so that we'll know and be able to read the spark plug. All right, well... Give it a yank. Thought about it. Whoa. Apparently I spilled some gas down there. Well, at least we know we got spark. Okay. Choke off. Try it again.
Well, I'm not quite sure what I think of the sparks that are coming out of it. But when you consider how high hour this engine was to start with, and my bet is it's probably pulling in caca that was in here. I didn't clean out the carbon that was on the inside of that. I just realized as we were doing this. So I'm betting the carbon is breaking off and cycling through the head right now. But as you guys saw, it was splashing oil around in here, but it really didn't seem like that much oil was splashing. I think what we're going to do from here is, let me move, sorry I'm shaking, I'm really excited right now. I think what we're going to do is, I'm going to take these El Cheapo ones, and I'm going to cut this off, and I'm going to tap in to this, and then I'm going to tap into probably right here, put an oil return back and forth here, and then I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do about the oil level. I think my best bet probably is to T off of this, maybe, maybe put a T here and bring it into where the oil sensor is. And the reason why I'm debating that is that anything that is down in here, maybe that's what I should do. Maybe I should come off of this to here, and then that would give me an oil level that I could see if I use clear line. That might work. So if I drill that one out and I go to the valve cover... I drill this one out, and then I come up to this, since I've got to redo the gasket on the side of this thing anyway. It wouldn't take very much to tap that out. Plus, I've got to drain the oil to do both of those plugs. I think that's what I'm going to do at this point. So, to recap, the plastic did not fail. My printer's capability failed. If I had a better printer that was capable of the ABS plastic, I think we would have been able to pull it off. I will post up the plans for that intake in case somebody else wants to have it as a template to build something like this or try to cast. Because that's the other thing with this plastic stuff. If I was to make this in what's called PLA plastic, I could potentially sand cast every plastic part into aluminum or zinc so that's another possibility we might try in the future now now that we know it runs we can start talking about upgrades too so here's what i'm debating i'm debating one of those 10,000 rpm tillison flywheels in order to see whether that will fit on this those are showing up on Amazon now on a regular basis for about 55 bucks. At 10,000 RPMs rated, I'm never going to blow it up. The other thing I'm debating at this point is what do we do about the internals? Because obviously we're not going to turn seven grand on a stock Predator rod. That's suicide for the engine. So sooner or later, we've got to do a cam. We've got to do a rod. You guys with way more knowledge than me, fill the comments with what would you do to it in order to hit seven grand in order to run this thing on a lawn tractor. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys.